Okay, we're good. Uh, okay, so hi everyone, I'm Musa Suleimani, and today I will be talking about hacking influence and activating thousands of influencers at scale, uh, ranging from 100 followers to uh, 100 million followers. Um, so let's see here, there we go. Um, so what will I be talking about today? Um, I will be talking about why I'm qualified to talk to you. Um, I will also be talking about finding influencers, um, auditing influencers, and contacting and managing those influencers at scale. Then we're gonna end with a little bit of Q&A. We're gonna keep it pretty um, surface level at the main ideas, but we're gonna dive in pretty deep when I talk about uh, data. Um, so um, also make sure you write um, any questions down that you have for the Q&A. I find when I'm doing these virtual summits or even in person when I go to events, um, I always write things down um, and it just kind of helps me remember questions um, that I had. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so who am I? Uh, my name is Musa Suleimani. I'm a software engineer and a patented data scientist. Uh, my team and I have built numerous products um, and we use uh, marketing, um, we use data-driven marketing solutions to scale uh, revenue for our own products. Um, and everything we do, we build internally. We don't really use third-party solutions. Um, and also we built the world's largest uh, social in intelligence database to help marketers scale their top funnel strategies. So I'll talk a little bit about my company later, um, but we track over 120 million um, uh, influencers across 25 different social media platforms. Um, and I have a pretty exciting offer for you guys um, at the end of the uh, summit so you guys can take advantage of that huge database for a pretty low price. Um, so let's first talk about finding influencers. Um, so the kind of four ways you can find influencers for your business that I kind of thought about was um, social media research. So if you're just sitting on your phone and doing the research yourself on Instagram or on TikTok um, and kind of reaching out to people, you can scrape the data, you can hire an agency, um, or there's a number of these social intelligence platforms similar to mine that are out there. Um, that, that you can use to identify influencers. Um, and then I kind of made this little matrix um, on the right-hand corner of the, um, the, the slide here, where you can see the effectiveness of one of these solutions um, in relation to its cost. So um, as you can see, the effectiveness, you obviously want something effective. Social media research isn't that effective in my opinion. Um, you're kind of clouded by decision, uh, by decisions and just numerous data points. Um, and it's hard to kind of condense that information um, in one sitting uh, without all the information at your disposal. The other kind of ineffective way, unless you're a technical person, is scraping data. Um, if you're wanting to uh, scrape data from like a specific hashtag or from a specific location, then this works fine. Um, if you have a good understanding of code or you have a technical co-founder, this is probably the route to go. Um, next is um, uh, on the more effective side, um, on a high cost level, is uh, hiring an agency. So typically you want to hire an agency if you have a larger budget um, and you don't really have a team, you need to delegate that work. Um, this tends to make sense. Um, and there's also some numbers associated that I'm going to jump into right now. Um, where it makes sense to invest in a social intelligence platform as opposed to an agency. Um, if, if, if you're a small team um, or a department in, within a, a company and you want to save money, then it probably makes more sense to invest in a social intelligence tool. Typically, if, it's, if your ad spend is, um, if uh, the tool is less than 20% of your ad spend, then it makes sense to invest in a, a social intelligence platform tool because typically agencies will charge 20%. So it's worth it if um, you have, if the tool is more than 20%, you might as well just hire the agency because you're actually gonna be saving money by doing that. It, it sounds like someone is unmuted um, and I can hear some background noise. Um, can everyone make sure their mics are muted? Cool, thank you very much. Um, so one of the pros of using the social intelligence platform, as opposed to the aforementioned other three, um, is, uh, or some information about it, I guess, uh, what you should look for in a social intelligence platform, um, if you're going to go that route, is the number of accounts that uh, they, they have on the platform, 
really right now, a lot of the social intelligence platforms um, all have a lot of accounts that they track. Um, so you won't really run into that option. Um, but what's really important is the amount of filterable options. So you want to be able to filter by as many things as possible to get as granular as possible to, to data, um, to get as granular data points as possible. So you can niche down to the perfect influencer. And then you also want the ability to contact influencers. I've noticed this trend, a lot of social intelligence platforms just give you the information and then they're just kind of like, all right, go on Instagram and DM them or whatever. But that's not really effective. Um, you want the ability to contact them um, at scale. The typical price point that you're going to pay for a social intelligence platform um, is between $99 and $399 a month. Um, however, there are some more expensive options like Grin, um, Upfluence, Aspire IQ um, that are going to be like $3,000 a month. Again, if you have that budget, then it may be um, advantageous for you to go down that road. Um, and then you can see some of those um, platforms down there, including mine, which is Tensor Social, which I'll show you guys um, in a bit here. Um, one of the things I want to talk about with um, the using a social intelligence platform um, and finding influencers is the golden weapon. I've been kind of on this um, bandwagon since 2016, talking about micro and nano influencers. I've used micro and nano influencers to drive over 300,000 downloads in just a couple hours to my apps. Um, and these are just people with like a few thousand followers, right? Um, so a micro slash nano influencer, um, a nano I consider being under 10,000 followers, in some cases under 5,000, um, and then a micro influencer, someone under 50,000 uh, followers. Uh, the reason why I consider them to be the golden weapon of top funnel marketing um, is the level of intimacy they have with their audience. So if you consider like if Kylie Jenner, for example, um, well, actually she's a bad example because she has a lot of um, uh, clout. But if you consider someone with like 150,000 followers, um, they may not have that level of intimacy with their audience as someone with like 2,000 followers, right? Um, and you can find that. No by, one cares. If no one cares, then you can just leave the the uh, presentation. You can leave, motherfucker. We'll give you time to, to leave. Yeah, right, sorry about thank that. You. Yeah. Yo, sh shows your. Uh, give me a second. All right, cool. Sorry about that. We got some trolls. No problem. No problem. Yeah, I, I get it. Um, and you can typically find these people. Um, you can typically find micro and nano influencers just doing like um, location searches on Instagram. Um, so if you actually let me go ahead and just show you guys on Instagram if you. Just go on to, um, let's do, let's do kind of a smaller town. Let's do, actually, we'll just do Chicago, that's fine. Can you search locations on web? I don't think you can actually. Oh, actually you can't. So um, on, if you go on the Instagram app, then you, you can search locations and then just basically browse through to find people that are posting in different locations with smaller amounts of followers. Um, that's probably the best route to take um, if you're just starting out. And then you can also use uh, social intelligence platforms um, to find, um, to find uh, micro and nano influencers. So looks like someone's chatting in here. Let's see what they have to say real quick. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rob and John. Um, all right, cool. So let's move on here. Um, so after you've identified influencers, um, and again, I'm gonna go through kind of a process on the Tensor platform, um, but I just kind of wanna go through this, this, this presentation first, just to um, give you the theory behind finding and, and auditing influencers, then we're gonna go into some concrete examples. Um, so when you're auditing influencers and you're about to make that contact with them, always maintain the data-driven mindset is what I call it. And the data-driven mindset is rooted in seeing things differently. Um, it's one thing to just say that. I know a lot of agencies, marketers say that they see things differently or that they're data-driven, um, but they don't enact those practices. Um, and it's important to um, remember that the data-driven mindset is rooted in connecting things, right? Connecting dots, connecting people, connecting data points, 
understanding the relationship between data points um, and seeing what uh, conclusions you can arrive to uh, by, by those connections. So for example, um, one of the filters you'll find on social intelligence platforms is the brand affinity. Shut up, shut up. Uh, looks like Benjamin. Uh, you out of here. Ooh, yeah, sorry that. about that. that was... <clears throat> All right. Um, so uh, the brand affinity um, data point, for example, is um, I found a lot of success in applying that brand affinity, um, those numbers on like a deck. And again, I'll go through those examples uh, for you. So if you're if you're pitching a brand, for example, on a if you like run like 10 accounts on Instagram or something um, and you want to illustrate to a brand that uh, you have an audience that already has affinity for that brand, um, it would be advantageous for you to give those numbers um, in your deck to prove that you, to quantitatively prove that you have that audience. Oops, keep hitting the... Um, the other thing uh, that I've uh, always carried with me is the quote from Ronald Reagan, trust but verify. So when you're talking to influencers, you know, trust their numbers, but always, you know, double check, ask for screenshots, um, do your own research, use uh, the information that's out there to your disposal, and always beware of fake influence. Uh, so it's estimated that fake influence has costed brands uh, $1.3 billion last year. Um, and this is just basically uh, fraud. <laughs> so this is just uh, influencers that have uh, fraudulently uh, led on brands that they have a larger audience that they actually, than they actually do. Um, so these, this number is basically calculated by, okay, if an influencer is charging $10,000 for a post, um, but really only 50% of their audience is legit, then it's more like $5,000 per post to actually get that audience. So $5,000 contributes to fraud. Um, and a way you can kind of fight against this fake influence is always checking audience insights on social intelligence platforms and asking for those screenshots from, um, from influencers. Um, and you can check these credibility scores on those social media, on those uh, social intelligence platforms. On Tensor, we call it follower, follower credibility. On Hype Auditor, if you use Hype Auditor, they have an audience quality score, and it's a really good metric uh, that they use. Um, and always just remember that numbers don't lie, but people lie with numbers. So always, um, always double check, always ask for uh, screenshots, um, and um, go through the the process of just um, getting all the information possible before working with a brand before cutting them that check. Um, so after you know that you want to work with an influencer, you know, um, contacting and managing them at scale um, is uh, a pretty tedious process. Again, there are platforms that do this for you um, or that can help you do it, um, but they're really expensive. So I'm going to talk about a couple of hacks that you can do that are basically free to use. Um, you can export um, influencers right in a lot of these social intelligence platforms I was mentioning, like Hype Auditor and in my own tool tensor, you can export influencers um, into CSVs, Excel spreadsheets, Google Sheets, and for developers out there, um, you can export into JSON files. Um, and the JSON files basically, you can plug it into your own um, CR your CRM of choice or uh, whatever you work with, with managing relationships, and then you can keep track of those accounts um, on your own platform. Um, and then for contacting and managing those relationships, um, if you're just using like an email platform, I would recommend SendGrid and MailChimp. And also I will uh, later send um, everyone a resource for $50. You can get um, $50,000 worth of SendGrid for, for free. So for, for $50 that, and you can get like a bunch of AWS credits. So it's really cool. I'll, I'll make sure to follow up with everyone on that. Um, and then you can use like MailChimp or, or any other email platform. If you're working with a CRM, um, I would recommend HubSpot or Salesforce uh, for that, uh, for managing those relationships. And then if you just want to send like a mass email, which we'll do together as an example later, um, I would recommend Hunters. Uh, they just released like a, a um, mass email send tool um, that Josh Factor actually told me about yesterday. Um, I would recommend GMAS um, or Mixmax. And Justin actually taught me about Mixmax, which is a great tool. 
Um, I typically will use a combination of these tools if I'm reaching out to thousands of influencers um, to do a campaign. Um, I'll probably use um, GMAS to send the, the emails out and then connect to a CRM and just bridge the inbox together um, to maintain, to um, manage those, um, those contacts and those uh, inboxes. Um, so actually, I'm going to wait on QA. I'm going to show you guys. Um, I'm going to go through an example uh, real quick on the Tensor platform. Um, I can show you guys on some of on some other platforms if you guys want. Just let me know. But I'm going to do a quick little uh, run through of the Tensor platform so you can see how um, we've built our tool internally to find influencers. Um, and then we'll jump into Q and A. Um, again, if you have any questions, just write those down during the during the little presentation. And then um, we will, uh, I'll, I'll answer those for you uh, later um, after I'm done with the presentation. Um, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the um, Tensor social platform. So this is a company that I started in fall of 2018. Um, and we have the world's largest database with 91, actually 120 million social profiles. Um, on Instagram, we track uh, nearly 92 million accounts. Um, and these accounts can be filtered by location, uh, so geographics, demographics, psychographics, and different performance filters as well. We not only track Instagram, but we have YouTube and TikTok. So if you're wanting to find influencers on TikTok or on YouTube, um, you have that capability as well. Um, and that's those are kind of the data points that um, everything's normalized around. So uh, we have other social profiles that we track that can be found here but um, every data point is normalized around Instagram. Let's see here, I can get a couple. Okay, cool. Thank you, Mike. You are, you're very kind. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run through an example um, as if I was a beauty brand. Um, actually, before, before I move into that, is there a specific vertical that anyone wants me to tackle? I'll uh, leave that up to you guys to, to decide. If anyone wants a specific vertical we want to tackle. Uh, I guess we could see maybe like, uh, let's see, <clears throat> one vertical, a, a, a beauty, somebody said beauty on TikTok. Okay, beauty on TikTok, we want to do yeah. that. That's fine, let's do that. Um, so let's do, um, so, so I said beauty I, on IG too. <laughs> okay, so let's start with let's start with Instagram, um, and then we'll move to TikTok um, after. So what we built is this isn't really like a keyword search. Uh, we have a white paper on the Tensor Discovery, uh, but we consider this to be the Google of influencer search. So I'm going to go ahead and type beauty here, um, and this will only find beauty influencers, but it will find. Um, um, influencers that are in the are tangent to this um, to the beauty category as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do beauty blogger. Okay, and then you can see here different search suggestions that Tensor makes for you to add um, onto the to the um, relevant search, and then topics that are larger are more well relevant. Topics that are smaller are slightly less relevant. Um, and then let's say we're running a campaign for, uh, we just want a United States influencer. This will go down to a city level. So if you're looking for um, influencers in like Tacoma, Washington, you can do that. Um, you can go down to that level. Um, and then let's say we want our audience to be primarily from um, the state of Florida, right? Let's say we're tack we, we want to tackle um, we want an audience from Florida. And let's say we want at least 25% of the audience to be from Florida. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're down to 186 um, accounts. So right there, that's a pretty like good number to just kind of go off of. I tend to like export around 100 or 200 um, accounts. But let's go down a little bit, a little bit deeper um, to kind of look at some of these other filters. So let's say we want um, gender, uh, we want female influencer, um, and we want a primarily a female account. So let's go 50% or more. 
So we're down to 145 filters, uh, or 145 results, sorry. Um, the influencer we want, let's, we talked about micro influencers earlier, so let's go from 1,000 to 10,000. So 1,000 to 10,000 followers, we found 137 results. Uh, from 13, actually, let's do this. 13 to 18. So we want maybe a younger, and we only found three results. So actually that's probably, let's probably do 18 to 25. And maybe we want the audience to be primarily 18 to 25 as well. And we'll do at least 15%. Um, and we found 56 results. So it keeps going down the more filters that I add. Um, and then let's say we want their contact details, of course, because we want to contact them. So this will basically just make sure that we, when we export, we have an email address and we have a phone number. So this is pretty good. We found beauty bloggers um, from in the US, 25% uh, or more of their audience is from Florida. 50% or more of their audience is female. They are a female. 15% uh, or more of their audience is 18 to 24. They are 18 to 25. Um, they have 1,000 to 10,000 followers um, and we have contact details. on. So now I'm gonna export that list and let's export all 54. Let's go ahead. This will download here in a minute. <clears throat> cool. And then I'm just going to go to my downloads. And where is it? Where is it? And then you are given this uh, spreadsheet. <laughs> Um, or the CSV, you can export it in different uh, ways as well uh, through our API, but this is what you get if you just um, download from the front end. And you get this whole list of uh, the influencers, the 54 that we exported. So you have their uh, username, their first name, um, their, their full name on Instagram, the link to their account, their picture, number of followers, the number of likes, um, their bio, where they're from, uh, they're this, the country they're from, their email address, so we have all those, um, a phone number if we have it, um, that you can contact them from, their YouTube channel, Facebook, and other um, social profiles, um, their gender, their age, their uh, language that they speak, um, different ca uh, interest categories, uh, different brand affinities uh, that I mentioned earlier that I'll get into in detail in a second, um, what country they're from, their state, the city they're from, um, what percentage audience is female, what percentage uh, audience is uh, the, the age that you specified, um, and also the state, the location that you specified earlier. So what we can do next, if we're running a campaign, um, if you wanna be lean, literally just take this, go all the way down, copy, and then take that into like Google Sheets, um, and then, um, or actually you can just put the Google Sheets or the CSV into Google Sheets um, and then just run a mail merge and then just contact all of them on GMAS. If you're not familiar with what GMAS is, um, I think it's gmas.com, it might be .co. Um, let's just do a quick search here. It might be dot, yeah, it's .co. Um, if you're not familiar with GMAS, I highly recommend this tool. This is like the number one tool in a, hack, in a growth hackers uh, tool belt. You can just send uh, mass emails right in Gmail. Um, I think it's like, Justin, how much is it? Like $10 a month or something like that? It's really cheap, I think. Yeah, it's super cheap. It just depends on the tier. Um, yeah, so just, yeah. yeah, you can send unlimited account, uh, unlimited emails on here um, for nine bucks a month, um, or you can pay annually. Uh, it's 90 bucks a year. Um, I. I use this all the time and, and it works great. They give you these great reports too, um, to show you like the deliverability. Um, if you prefer something a little bit more professional, I use SendGrid. Um, and I, again, will send everyone a resource where they can get, um, they can get a year's worth of SendGrid for free. 
Um, it's just 50 bucks. Um, it's through startups.com. And again, um, Justin and I will follow up with that uh, link. So you can send emails for free. And I think I can send uh, 700,000 emails a month uh, for free uh, using that um, using that that thing. So it's really cool. I'll make sure to follow up with that. Um, all right. So I showed everyone how to find and export. Um, so let's say we've contacted, you know, we want to work with um, this, this uh, Tiffany girl. Um, let's go back to Tensor. <clears throat> She's right here. Um, let's say we've, we've contacted her. We're interested in working with her. We got her screenshots. We just want to verify. We want to learn more about her audience. So we're going to view her audience report. Um, so we're going to hit continue. And then this poll is a comprehensive report on the influencer's um, account. So we can see the amount of followers she has, basically all the influencer details, her audiences, her audience insights, and also um, her individual posts and how well they perform as well. Um, so I'm just going to kind of briefly go through this. Um, everyone will get access to this tool. Um, so you will be able to pull these reports on your own and kind of decipher the information. Um, but I'm going to kind of take you into my head and how I interpret data um, as a data-driven marketer, quote unquote, um, and to kind of give you an idea of how you should use these data points um, to, to your advantage, not only if you're contacting influencers, but also if you run pages on Instagram, how to use your own report to pitch brands um, and, and get money from them. So I'll kind of uh, take a two-pronged approach. Um, so we can see uh, her followers, how many average likes she gets from her last 30 posts, um, where she's located, um, her paid post performance, um, which is just a um, statistical average of how well her, um, her sponsored posts do stacked up to her organic posts. Um, so they tend to perform 70% uh, less, uh, her, her paid posts tend to perform 70% less um, than that of an organic post. So her, her sponsored posts don't seem to work really well. Uh, but again, if you are an influencer, let's say this number is 120%, um, then that's something you're going to want to show to a brand and say, hey, um, I actually get 20% 20 20 um, more engagement from my posts um, that are sponsored than are um, organic. So the closer to 100% you are on this, the better. Um, if you go over 100%, then that's even better. Um, but it's rare to go over 100% on sponsored posts. Um, the trending analysis is um, just a, a way to see if you're trending up or down lately. And this is actually developed with some previous uh, Instagram engineers that I worked with um, in the past um, to kind of uh, just to figure out the shuffling of content in your feed. Um, so the lower that your trending analysis is, the less likely you are to be shuffled at the top of the feed when a um, when you when you post something when you post new content um, if your uh, audience is highly engaged um, and this really just as this really just shows you how well your recent posts have been performing um, to your overall perform to the overall performance of your um, account um, so if you the last like three or four posts have not been doing so well um, but your overall account um, does well then that trending analysis will go down um, but if your recent couple of posts have been going up, um, but your overall count is low, then you'll see that number um, uh, increase. And you can probably see that here um, by these graphs. So her follower count has been decreasing. And then although her average likes were increasing until G January, um, as of recent, they've been decreasing. So that's um, an indication that she's been trending downward. Um, and this kind of helps you get an idea of uh, whether or not this is a good person to work with at this time. Um, you typically want to work with someone as they're trending upward, right, for your brand. Um, her average engagement rate is 6.3%. Um, and then you can see how she stacks up to um, her competition or other influencers in her follower category. Um, so similar accounts um, that have um, 8,000 followers um, get between 2.10 and 2.6% um, engagement, whereas she's getting 6.3%. Uh, so her engagement rate is actually higher than um, accounts in her category. 
Um, we can see topics she talks about. So as we deciphered earlier, she's a beauty influencer. Um, so this says she's undiscovered uh, MUA. So she's not discovered yet in her opinion. Um, next, we can see lookalikes. Uh, some really great strategies that you guys should uh, really consider if you're doing a campaign um, and you're on a shoestring budget is uh, the lookalikes. So the lookalikes is a really powerful metric. If you are running, if you want to run a campaign with Kylie Jenner, for example, but you don't want to pay Kylie Jenner prices, then you're going to want to go look at her lookalikes and maybe find someone with not as many followers, but has that same content um, or even the same um, audience um, as, uh, well, she doesn't have any lookalike uh, on her audience, but um, find a lookalike and do a campaign with them where the price actually might be driven down. Um, the other use case that you'll probably want to write down for the lookalikes is the um, a campaign rather than just doing, you know, one-off posts with an influencer. So what you tend to find is um, if you create a propagation effect, and basically that just means the more number of the more times that the content is viewed by multiple people, the more likely someone is to click through that content um, because they're seeing it from multiple sources. So how does that tie into the lookalikes? Um, if you do a campaign not only with um, what's her name, Tiffany, um, but you do a campaign with um, Deborah, Margie, and Safi here, the, the three of them combined, you're touching that same audience multiple times um, and showing them different content about your product. So you're building a community around that product as opposed to just doing one-off posts with the influencer and hoping that the audience clicks through. On average, you'll probably want seven or eight touch points with an audience um, before they click through to your product. Um, and that was, I forgot who gave me that stat. It was at a Stacking Growth Conference though, and I thought that was a cool stat. Um, do you remember who that was, Justin, by any chance? I forgot. <laughs> okay. Oh. No, yeah, but I remember it. I remember that I connected with him after. He's like, yeah, it's like seven or eight times. Like Facebook ads, they need to see the content at least seven or eight times before they click. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And I, I think that's pretty true even, even with me. If I see an ad like eight times, I'm like, okay, well, let me see what this is about before I click through to it. Um, the other thing is you can see um, their engagement spread of their last post. So you can click on these um, and actually view the posts themselves. Um, their popular hashtags that they use. Oops, we're gonna do a little bug there. Let's go ahead and open that again. Sorry, guys. Um, the popular hashtags that they use, popular uh, people that they're tagging in their posts, um, the influencers' brand affinity. Um, so you can see the brands that they talk about um, or that they've engaged with. Um, and this is either an in audience or an out audience. So an in audience means they've interacted um, with this influencer. An out audience means um, the influencers interacted with um, this uh, brand. Um, so she's probably talked about, I, I don't know what Game of Tones is, but it sounds pretty relevant. Um, Adidas, Anastasia, uh, Beverly Hills, and a number of different brands. Um, and again, what I talked about earlier um, about using brand affinity to your advantage of, in a deck, um, if you use, um, if you if you are running a couple of different Instagram accounts, using the brand affinity, uh, but for your audience, um, is highly powerful to um, get a brand deal with a with a brand. So if you're running a page, um, let's say you you are this account, right, and you're pitching um, Sephora, uh, right, and you can go to them and say, well, 825 of my followers have. Um, affinity for MAC cosmetics. So we can try to convert those people into Sephora um, followers. And then you can find the Sephora uh, followers right down here. So there's 547. Um, and then over time, you can measure the deltas or the change of the number of followers from uh, MAC cosmetics to Sephora. And then you can quantitatively show the client, hey, I actually converted, you know, 100 um, MAC Cosmetics clients to Sephora. So we should continue working on this brand deal. <coughs> um, you can also see influencer categories. That's not really that interesting. Um, you can pretty much decide for that info from her content. 
Um, and then that's like the influencers details. Um, what I try to show people and, and talk to them about is the audience details. Again, like we talked about in the deck, um, it's really important to um, do the legwork and do your research um, when it comes to the audience, um, because it's really easy to fake. Um, and influencer fraud is a, is a really big problem right now um, in the industry. So it's important to do your legwork and make sure you're reaching that, that right audience. Um, so you aren't wasting money um, or your client's money on um, ineffective marketing campaigns. So um, we built this, this, the fake follower indicator that I, I talked about earlier. Hype Auditor also has a great um, tool there. They have a very uh, accurate um, metric as well. They call the audience quality score. Um, and that's a very accurate number as well. We give a percentage of the, cre the credibility of the account. Um, so it's 85%, uh, this influencer is 85% um, legit. So 15% of our followers are um, maybe bought or they may be bots um, that are following her that you wanna look out for. Typically anything under 80% is pretty sus, um, but under like 50 or 60%, um, you know that they probably bought followers. And then you can, you can do this for both the, the followers and the likers. So it doesn't look like she's buying any likes. Um, she's probably, she's probably not buying followers either. These are, these might just be like uh, bots um, in the um, beauty space that follow, follow her. Um, you can see her reachability, um, which means the number of followers that her followers have. Um, and that's an important metric. Um, or I'm sorry, it's the number of accounts um, that her followers uh, follow. So this would be the uh, following of her followers. Um, and this is important. Um, these like higher number, if they're following, if her followers are following a lot of accounts. If you do a campaign with her, your, the content that you paid her to promote may get lost in the shuffle of content um, that um, she's promoting or that she's posting. Um, because if they're following a lot of accounts, they will probably see um, a lot of those other accounts as well. So it's good to be mindful of that number. You will probably want a, a higher under 500 or a higher under uh, 500 to 1,000. Um, so in this instance, I would not recommend um, doing a campaign with her because a lot of uh, her followers uh, follow a lot of uh, accounts. So her content is, Tiffany's content is likely being shuffled um, in that mix. Um, you can see her female and male ratio. So it looks like 87% uh, of her audience is female, 12%, uh, 13% is male. And you can actually see the number of followers that fit that um, and also the number of average likers that fit that uh, gender. Uh, same thing with the age and gender. Um, again, the way to use this data point and maintaining that data-driven mindset um, if you're working with a client that's very, or, or even you, if you're doing campaign, um, if you know in particular you want females um, 18 to 24 um, and you want to see how many you're going to reach by doing a campaign with Tiffany, uh, go down here to female age split and get the, the raw number on that. So you know that of her, what was it, 8,000 followers, 3,000 of them are going to fit that um, criteria that you're looking for, that female 18 to 24. So let's exit out of that. Um, same thing with the location by city. Um, so again, if you want to know quantitatively um, how many of our, her followers are in Miami, you can pull that number. 1,120 of her followers are in Miami. And on average, 66 of her likers um, are in Miami. Uh, same thing with country. United States, uh, 5650. Uh, Brazil, 1,123, um, so on and so forth. And then you can see the location by state. Um, and then same thing with ethnicity and language. You can see that breakdown. We already looked at the, the audience brand affinity um, and then the audience interest category. Um, and then we don't have any audience lookalikes. Let's talk a little bit about notable, follow, notable users. Um, these are accounts that are either verified or they have a large following that follow them. Um, this is cool to look at if you are wanting to um, poll the, excuse me, if you're wanting to look at the top fans of an account. 
um, and like the brand, the influential brand ambassadors of a, of an account on Instagram. So let's say um, we can pull an Adidas um, example. Sorry, guys. Just out of curiosity, does that happen to anyone else where their email app just kind of opens up on its own? Just post in the chat because I'm curious because um, that happens to me all the time. So if you are um, doing a, if you're, let's say Adidas, right, or, or Nike, and you're wanting to steal the brand ambassadors of, of your competitor, um, you could go down to the notable users and pull that list and you can download it. Pull that list of notable users and contact them on your own to try to get them to switch to the other side, right? It's a pretty powerful tool. Um, and then that concludes the audience details. Again, all this information could also be pulled from our API. So if you have your own tool um, that you just want to plug all this raw data into and then automate your influencer marketing process, it's totally possible. Um, you can see her popular and sponsored posts to see how well they've performed. Again, as we saw earlier, uh, on average, her paid posts do 30 do 30% 30 that of her organic posts. So um, we can see on average her organic posts, um, her popular ones get like 1,900, 1,600, 1,500, so on, uh, you know, 1,400, 1,300, um, and then her sponsored get like 245, 353, 483. This one got a lot, but uh, they tend to perform. This one only got 90, um, and this was just a few months ago, um, whereas these ones were like in May. Um, so again, you can see that 30% number really shining through there. Um, and then last, uh, about the post is her story. Um, so a really popular, um, kind of way to do content now is through stories. Obviously it's the most effective way to drive like traffic to your website because people can just swipe up if they have more than 10,000 followers. Um, so we estimate she gets about 1000 reach on her account, 1000 impressions, um, about 54 people, when they watch, go back and, and rewatch her content. 978 people just skip ahead. Um, we can estimate 130 swipe ups. Um, and then she posts about once per day. Um, and about two people respond to her stories per, per post. Um, and again, this is also uh, able to be pulled in our API if you want to automate that process. Um, OK, so that kind of concludes the uh, reporting. Um, so I'm actually gonna just um, shut it. Justin, is there anything else, or did you want me to jump into Q and A, or do you want me to kind of run through an example on like GMAS of how to uh, reach out to all these influencers? Maybe we can do like a an example of reaching out to like a hundred or so. Yeah, if you want to pull up that example, uh, I think that'd be cool for everybody here, and then we can kind of uh, shift into a Q and A here. I think we have people. Definitely uh, sending in some really great questions here. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna, uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second because um, this is client privilege, um, <laughs> confidentiality. So I'm gonna pull it up. I am gonna pull up the GMAS report for you guys just to show you what it looks like um, because I would recommend using that if you're just starting out. So just give me like two seconds here and I will pull that out. So let's see here. Make sure that I can... Thanks, Ian. <laughs> yeah, Musa's the man. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <clears throat> let's see here. GMAS report. Make sure this is the right one. Okay, cool. Ooh. So nice. Um, yeah, um, this is going to show the client. Uh, I'm sure, I, I'm sure he won't mind. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Private, oh, private, sure. private group of uh, growth hacker secrets. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, please request report. To me. Oh, I hit record, not share. Um, okay, cool. So desktop. Okay, cool. So uh, this is what I report with GMAS. If you guys want, you know, just put it in the, in the chat. If you guys want me to send an email on GMAS, I can. That's fine. I can just like send like a bullshit one to like 50 influencers or something that's okay just to see kind of what it looks like um but this is kind of what the this is what the reports on gmas look like um so i sent to 1500 people well firstly this so tally is a financial app a fintech app so 
we used Tensor to identify people that were highly susceptible to having credit card debt. Um, and uh, what we did is we found a large enough, uh, we found a large audience uh, within these 1,532 um, influencers, their um, audiences showed a high level of um, the susceptibility to credit card debt. So we did a campaign um, with them. We reached out to 1,500 um, influencers. We got 124 re replies, um, 815 people opened it, um, and 165 people actually downloaded our app. Um, and we actually got them some users just um, because of this email, because I guess the influencers wanted to check it out themselves. Um, some paying users, no, uh, as a matter of fact. Um, and then this shows you a kind of a breakdown of what um, the numbers were by the, um, the uh, domain. And then all this is tracked like within Gmail. Um, so you can take advantage of um, just basically using everything in Gmail and replying to all those um, influencers or replying to all those people you reached out to um, right within uh, Gmail. Um, so I really like using GMS. It's really simple to use. But again, there are more that an app, like a, a portal you can use. Um, but it's pretty easy. It's, it's easy to use once you figure it out. Um, and there are some great resources online. But I can go through an example if you guys want. Um, uh, so that's G GMAS. Um, you can also use SendGrid. I'm actually in the process of sending an email right now to everyone to show them our uh, partnership filter. Um, but you can send these like single sends and it's really easy. Just upload the uh, list of um, influencers. So you can just upload a, uh, a list of them. I'll show you how that's done. Uh, this will be the influencers that we pulled earlier. Select the CSV. Um, let's see here. Here we go. Uh, please ensure it is a valid CSV. It definitely is. Did I do something wrong? Oh, you know what I think it is? Oh. So occasionally, so SendGrid, something to keep in mind, actually. Um, good thing I caught this. Uh, CS, uh, SendGrid doesn't like CSVs without headers. So let's do this. To remove that, save it, and then um, well, actually, we have to export this as a CSV now. And we'll call this our duty influencers. Okay, we're gonna go back here, select it, and that should work. Review. And then they'll ask you to do all this mapping stuff. You can if you want. If you're going to be using mail merging, like, hey, beauty by 2C, uh, really love your content. Or, hey, Tiffany, uh, if you're using mail merge, then this is probably really, um, really important. Um, but I'm not going to map any of these. But you can. You can create different fields within uh, SendGrid um, and do all that fun stuff. Uh, this is email address. This is important. So let's make sure that's mapped. And then phone number. Um, Make sure that's mapped. Um, and you can map any of these that you want to SendGrid. Um, again, this is, this is primarily used for um, mail merging if you need to uh, map these correctly. So for example, if you're wanting in the email to put, hey, I'm looking for influencers in the United States, in the country, then um, you know, you'll probably want to do that. I don't, I don't see why you would do that, but just to give you an idea of, of the use case. Um, and then let's do, uh, oh, so actually on all these that I didn't map, I have to actually click skip column. So I'm going to go, oh, let's see if I map. There we go. So now I can go down here, add contacts. And then I think it's going to take like a couple minutes for that to upload, but we'll see that in a bit. So as you can see, the 42 that we added earlier are here. And then we can just do a single send. Let's do that. And then we'll just do, um, let's do a blank template. And they have a nice designer right in SendGrid that you can use. And then let's just do a text box. Hey, girl. 
love your content. Just by the way, I'm not going to be sending this, this email <laughs> blast. I'm just, yeah, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> illustrating what you can do. Um, would love to do a... So you're going to hit on all the IG models. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is a great way to get girls' phone numbers on Instagram. <laughs> Thanks. All right. And then um, basically close out of this. Go to your settings. Um, you can name the email. So we're going to just name this beauty influencers. Um, three, what's today's date? The 28th? And then for me, hey, love your content. And that's the subject line. You can add a little pre-header. What's up? A little pre-header there. And then we're going to send it to the beauty influencers. Um, select the unsubscribe group and send it immediately. Um, and then review details and send. And then let's see here. And then you can preview all the pre preview everything, uh, make any edits that you need to. Um, and then once you click send, then it will send the email. Again, I'm not going to be sending this email, but um, you get the idea of how easy it can be to just um, send all of these emails um, at once. So I'm actually going to go back here. Um, and then that's all housed right here in SendGrid. And then you can view those. I'll actually show you guys a, what these reports look like. This is an email I sent. Um, about a week ago, two weeks ago. And you can see the number of delivered, unique opens, uh, unique clicks, et cetera. Um, and you can view these by percents as well, if you're a percentage of this person. And um, so this makes it really easy. Again, SendGrid is, is a really effective way to do mass emails. Um, the issue with using SendGrid is the relationship management, um, because anyone that replies to that email is just gonna go right to your inbox which then again on GMAS, um, it will do the same thing. So if you're wanting to counteract that, then I would recommend using HubSpot. HubSpot's free to sign up. The only thing um, that, I guess I have to allow cookies. I, I don't really use HubSpot. I don't really use a CRM, but um, on HubSpot, what you can do, I'm actually just gonna create an account here. Unless I've created one in the past, I'm not really sure. <laughs> oh, look at that. So this is new to me. It looks like they have free email marketing now. <clears throat> so you can use HubSpot um, now, apparently, to just do all this um, relationship management. So let's see here. Um, yes. um, I have an account already, but let's just do a new account. Email address. Cool. And test. Cool. Uh, Okay, I guess we're going to go through a demo with them, guys. Sorry. Oh, here we go. Yes, please. Um, the way you want to do it on HubSpot, um, import. So I, again, don't know my way around HubSpot too much, um, but I'm going to try my best from what I remember. Um, start an import, um, upload from a file, let's do multiple files, let's get this out of the way, uh, multiple objects, uh, multiple objects that basically means, um, oh actually I think, no I, I'm wrong, so it's just one object, sorry, uh, contacts, and we're gonna choose that same file, Beauty Influencers. Um, okay. And now that's mapping like it did on um, SendGrid. And let's do, okay, so we have first name, 
you can create different properties as they call it. Um, so this is like their, which one do we click link? Uh, so this could be their uh, website URL. You can create them too. Um, and this could be like their create new property. So this would be like, um, okay, cool. Yeah, we'll name it fo uh, followers. And then what do we want me to do here? Okay, cool. So that way, right in HubSpot, you can, um, is that done? Yeah, single line followers, that's good. And then so right there, so right in HubSpot, um, you can have the follower um, details right there as well. Um, um, to do country, Let's see country, um, email address, cool. Now let's see phone number. <clears throat> let's see phone number again. Wait, phone number. And then you can map as many as you want. I'm just going to leave it there. <clears throat> and okay, boom, boom, finish the import. And then we'll see that um, finish here in a second. As we can see, it's loading. Okay, cool. So 43 uploaded. Let's view those contacts. And boom, so they're right here. Then what we can do, um, this is kind of where I don't know what I'm doing. So again, I don't use HubSpot that it's very effective for a lot of the tensor subscribers use uh, hubspot to manage their um, relationships with influencers so i'm thinking here we go emails get started all right let's do this let's just try to figure it out on our own shall we let's do it let's do a plain email Hey girl, love your content. <laughs> Would love to do a promo. Thanks. All right, cool. Um, let's do. Settings, it's probably going to be here. <clears throat> Recipients, here we go. So the recipients is going to go to the beauty influencers and then you can select any to not send it to. We're just going to do that. Uh, let's do review and send. Oh, subject is required. Hey girl. Cool. And company name. So everyone that wants to um, send me any love letters, that's my address. So. Cool. Um, review and send. Um, and then, so you're saying an email to that beauty influencer list that we just uploaded, and you can send it. I'm again not, um, but that's how you would do it on HubSpot. Um, you know, I'm actually kind of considering doing it just to see um, what happened. I, I'm actually curious because I've never used it on HubSpot before, but I'm, I'm curious to see how this um how this looks after i send it um yeah we'll see um i'm gonna go ahead and exit out of that but that's uh, that's how you would do it in hubspot and again all those relationships will be managed um right in hubspot so you can see um the people in, in the column view you can see people that have uh that you've uh emailed that have replied um so on and so forth and then all those conversations are managed right in this inbox right um, so let's see, let's go back to contact. Um, so let's say we've emailed all these people. Um, we go to her little um, activity feed and we can see like, oh, you emailed them whenever. The emails are right here. You can create emails, connect G Gmail, et cetera. And all that is just kind of housed under HubSpot. And sorry, I can't go in any deeper on HubSpot. I just, I don't really use HubSpot. So, um, but it looks like it, it would be a, a really good fit for, uh, for Tensor. So um, if you uh, don't use HubSpot, highly recommend it. I mean, this looks great. I'm, I'm probably going to start using this myself. Um, so yeah, um, that's how you would do it on HubSpot, SendGrid, and GMAS. Um, 
that's how you would to reach out to the all of them kind of at once and maintain those relationships um out of the three um i would say gmas is probably best to get started um sendgrid if you're just wanting to send mass emails and then hubspot if you're wanting to maintain those relationships with influencers um, so that kind of concludes the um, contacting and uh, maintaining relationships with um, influencers uh, segment. So let's kind of go back here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up to QA. Um, so let's go back to the chat here. And awesome. So cool. It looks like a lot of people are engaging here. Uh, Nolan, I've heard of close.com. That, that is also a very solid platform. That, that's an, another one to use. Um, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, so should we go in um, in order here? Let's see if we have any questions here starting from the beginning. Um, yeah, and if anybody has any other questions, feel free to just drop it on here. I know that there were some questions that were kind of missed previously. Uh, feel free to chime in and uh, say your questions here. We'll open it up as well. Yeah. Um, so which one do we want to pick first? Okay. So Daniel Newman, what's up, Daniel? How's it going? Great friend of mine. Um, he asked um, earlier, do we have an email feature live yet on Tensor? No, we don't. Uh, we do eventually plan on building something out um, similar to HubSpot where you can maintain those relationships within Tensor, um, but that feature is not live yet. Um, Daniel also asked if we have the email, um, oh, if uh, there's a Zapier integration for the JSON export, unfortunately not. Um, I think you can are with the CSVs though, um, and then map those to like HubSpot or whatever. Um, Nolan asked, um, could you add a way to upload a list of accounts? Uh, short answer, yes. Um, and then you would be able to just pull up I'm guessing what you mean by that is you upload a list of accounts and pull all their reports. Um, and yes, that, that is possible. Um, not on our front end, on our API, it is possible to do that. Um, Kevin Newman, uh, I don't know if that's any relationship to you, Daniel Newman, but um, how can you tell what uh, age users are? Um, using complex topic clusters um, and um, content classification. Um, on users' profile pictures um, and any posts, uh, any images that they've posted themselves. Um, Kendra asked, um, do influencers have to opt into your platform to show up or does the platform scrape Instagram on its own? Um, our platform uh, crawls Instagram on its own. Um, no influencers have to sign up. Yeah, no. Uh, as, as Fabian said, yeah, 91 million influencers have not signed up. Uh, where do you get this? Uh, Alex asked, uh, where do we get this data from? Again, this uh, data is crawled from Instagram and from other sources. Um, so, go. You know, um, Daniel asked um, a follow up to his Zapier question How do tech teams right now use the, fe the JSON feature? Um, they are integrating into their own internal system. Um, there's one client right now that's using it primarily for TikTok data, um, and they're pulling um, data from from Tensor um, to automatically up, update their CRM with their TikTok influencers uh, daily. Um, Fabian asks, can you see how many common followers influencers have as well? Um, can you extrapolate on that question? Got it. Nice one. I'm wondering if um, Fabian, if you don't mind, if you're still in here, can you follow up on that question? I, I don't totally understand. Um, Kim asked, will the recording be shared? Yes, it will. Um, Justin and I will share that. Oh, yeah, you just followed up with that one. Okay. Um, Alan asks, how do you tell what's a good price that they actually will take? I've had influencers give me a, a rate and I passed on them. Then weeks later, they reach out for a much cheaper rate. This is, um, like um, really hot topic in the influencer world. Um, <clears throat> I would recommend a pretty good pricing tool uh, for them. It's not the one that a lot of people use from Influencer Marketing Hub. Actually, that one is really bad and inaccurate. Hype Auditor does this really well. Um, I don't know how they do it, but they do it really well. Um, 
So I'll actually pull this is an account that my, my girlfriend runs. Um, but let's do the report. I want to say I might have to buy this, which I will if it doesn't show it to me. No, it doesn't. Or yeah, it does. Um, so the estimated price range, $10 to $165. Again, this is a general rule of thumb. Um, I'm not sure how Hype Auditor gets this data, um, but it's, I mean, I'm pretty sure my girlfriend would take, you know, 165 bucks. I can't say she'd take $10, um, but I could say, yeah, she'd take 165 for a post. Um, my guess is this is some kind of distribution they built um, based on the number of followers and how many, um, how much money they charge in the past for posts. Um, I, I've read some um, articles online that are, don't quote me on this, it's uh, something like $20 per um, thousand followers or it's something like that. Um, I unfortunately don't really have a concrete answer. It, it's a really subjective area. Um, because you're dealing with, um, you're dealing with, you know, an influencer and, and their audience, they're very particular about their audience. So really they set their own market, uh, rate as opposed to there being just a general market rate, uh, because it's on a circumstantial basis. Um, I wish there was a more general rule of thumb, but, um, or, or kind of a calculated answer, but unfortunately there isn't that I know of. Um, so let's, let's move on here. <clears throat> So Fabian mentioned he can't see TikTok in Discovery, only IG YouTube. Um, yes, so TikTok will be uh, released um, on uh, April 1st. And then Daniel Newman, does anyone have an influencer legal agreement uh, they would be willing to share? I do have one. Um, I will also send that out in addition to the startup. Uh, dot com discount where you can get SendGrid for free for a year. I think also in that uh, I'll have it's also a HubSpot deal um, that they're offering as well. Um, or there is one on AppSumo that you can take advantage of. Um, Kendra says rates are flexible. Yeah, I agree. I agree with what Kendra's saying here. This is this is yeah. It's, it's all, almost always on a circumstantial basis. Um, yes, so Fabian asked, can we have TikTok still? Yes, um, it will be on there. Um, let's see here. Oh, wow, I did not know that. So $10 CPM, that's cool. Uh, this is about 50% cheaper than what I saw. Um, how many follow up emails? Um, I think Nolan is referring to that GMAS report, if I'm not mistaken. Here we go. Uh, the follow-ups, uh, well, the replies were 124. I think we ended up only working with like four or five influencers on this though. But 124 people opted in uh, to do a campaign with us. Um, okay. I'm not sure where does the... What does the from info look like? Send from send group. Um, it it shows from the actual um, email address. So if I sent from moose at tensorsocial.com, it'll show that email, um, not like blah 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 at email.sendgrid.com. It'll actually show the actual email address. Um, let's take a look at what this is that no one shared with everyone. Oh, this is cool. Oh, this is great. Yeah, th thanks for sending this. Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of a lot of these. I know reply is actually really good. Um, that's actually one of the um, APIs that we're using for the own, for our own internal um, CRM that we're building. And I think yeah, GMAS is there. Yeah, these are great. Mixmax, Justin put me on that. That's a great tool um, as well. <laughs> Let's see here if there's any other questions. Yeah, close again. Close.com is great. Um, Kendra asks, any rule of thumb for charging companies monthly for influencer marketing services or to suggest an influencer budget to a company if they are clueless? Um, what I found success in in the past is like going with like a, um, like a test trial rate uh, at the beginning. So um, the, the one I typically work with is like 10,000 test budget. Um, and then you identify a, a CPI or, or a CPA from there. 
um, and then work off that. So if you test uh, 10,000 and say you get 10,000 signups to whatever traffic sort, whatever traffic destination you're going to, um, then you're uh, normalized around that $1 range. So now you know moving forward um, that they can pretty much just order um, acquisitions from there if you know that they're about a dollar. So then they could say, okay, well, uh, we want 100 thousand you know acquisitions next month so it'll cost about a hundred thousand dollars that's what i would recommend i hope that answers your question um but to answer the second part of your question if they are clueless you know guide them hold their hand and be like no this is how it's done i'm the expert here's the data right um and here's why and then just show them you know your um your metrics that's fun school yeah so ian mentions yeah if you have a bigger budget yeah, there's a lot of um, really cool uh, features in HubSpot that are paid. Um, but as you saw, we could send 2,000 emails a month uh, for free on, on HubSpot just now. Um, I've also heard of uh, Stream CRM. I've, I used to use that, um, and that's pretty good, too. It's just a little, like, uh, cluttered at times and hard to um, kind of find where all your content is. Um, Yeah, so this actually what Daniel says here kind of illustrates my point. Um, if an agency charges like two to 10K plus for this, um, Grin itself costs like three to 5K a month. So again, keeping, uh, being mindful of like the budget in mind, that's why I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, like if 20% or less of your budget, uh, or if uh, the tool itself costs less than 20% of the budget, then it's, it's advantageous to, um to take advantage of it because that's what you'd spend on an agency um and anything over 20 percent doesn't really make sense you might as well just hire an agency <coughs> um yeah yeah so um ian mentioned the open rate from hubspot gmas i can't speak to hubspot but on gmas i get really good open rates i think I think, again, I don't have any data to back this, but I think it's attributed to it just looking more organic, like it's coming from Gmail as opposed to. So Fabian mentioned TikTok again. Yes, you you are right. I didn't show TikTok, so I will show that here in a second. Um, yeah, Grin is like 25K a year. Let's see if we got any other questions here. Okay, it looks like the last question you can make yes. this. Yes. Um, so by what it, I think you mean from common followers is like shared audience. Um, this is um, able to be pulled from our API. We don't have that with, um, we don't have that on our front end because you have to compare it with another account. So compare with another account in our API, then you have the ability to compare the audience. Yeah, no problem. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so we'll also show, I'll show the TikTok stuff right now. Real estate creators on TikTok. Yes, let's, let's take a look at that. Let's do that real quick. Um, let's see if I can find it. Uh, let's go ahead and clear all these filters from earlier. Just want to refresh this. So this is the TikTok analytics. Um, so we don't have all the filters that we do on, on Instagram on here, but we do have a lot of them. Um, so you can filter by location, language, gender, age, content in their bio, lookalikes, followers, engagements, contact uh, details, when they last posted, how many views they get, um, and if they're uh, verified. Um, so I'm gonna do probably a bio search to find real estate. So I'm just gonna type in real estate here, see what we find. I found 60 results. Um, so let's see here. And we'll pull her report real quick. As you can see why we haven't launched this yet. Again, it's it's still a work in progress. Um, oh, actually, I'll have to look into why I can't pull a report on her. But um, let's go back to TikTok okay, real estate. Again, actually, this is capital. Let's just do real estate. See what we find. Okay. Yeah, so 60 results um, that you'd be able to uh, Poland, there would be an export button. Actually, let me open up my, let's open this up real quick. So this is our, this is a staging site. Not everyone can access this. Uh, you need a root password, but 
So let's do on TikTok. Let's see real estate there. Real estate again. Uh, so you see the 60 results. Um, let's do this person's uh, report. Let's see, she's involved in real estate in some capacity and why she references real estate in her bio. Okay, she's from Algeria. Okay, let's do this. Don't have too many data points on her. So let's go back. Let's do US. United States. Oops. United States. Oh, I think actually there's a bug here. So it, Fabian, to answer your question, this is why we have not released this yet because uh, there are still some bugs to work out. Um, I think I want to say, so let's, let's go here. Actually, that name looks familiar. So let's go here. Cool. So this girl, um, she referenced a, um, real estate in her bio as well. She has 133,000 followers. She gets about 375 likes on average. Again, this is TikTok um, data. These are the topics she talks about. She talks about installation a lot more than other topics by the looks of it. Um, and then you can kind of see the same breakdown of uh, data um, that we did earlier. So this is one of her more popular posts. Let's pull this up. Interesting. Um, and then get a, a, an overview of her audience details as well. <clears throat> so that's a, that is a TikTok report in case anyone was wondering. And it looks like her account is trending upward as of late. Um, Fabian, did that answer your question about TikTok? Let's see here. Looks like somewhere. Look at Jake Dupree. Uh, let's go ahead and do that, Noah. That's fine. Uh, let's do that. Enter reports. Let's see what uh, pulls up here. Uh, so this is Jake Dupree's um, Instagram report, or his uh, TikTok report, sorry. Um, he has 92,000 followers, on average gets 5,000 likes. It's a pretty wild distribution. Uh, but then again, that's kind of the nature of TikTok. It's not really um, as um, uniform as uh, Instagram in terms of TikTok. Um, so is there a specific metric that you wanted to look at on here, uh, no one? Wait for you to kind of reply. No. Oh, oh, just wanted to see. No problem. Um, I will put this um, report in the uh, chat if you guys want to look at it. I'll, I'll do that in a bit. Um, okay, cool. So, any of y'all had success with CPG influencer marketing? Um, I can't speak to that personally. Um, okay, so were there any other questions that anyone had? Speak now, or forever hold your silence. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. No, cool, thanks, thank Jim. you. Yeah, thank you. So um, the last thing I wanted to show, so on Tensor, um, we're giving 50% off your first month um, and 20% off monthly if you sign up. Um, uh, for the next, we're, this promo code is active um, indefinitely uh, for the Stacking Growth community. Um, so you get 50% off your first month and 20% off monthly. Just use the promo code um, SGFAM when you sign up. Um, and if you have any issues with it, just reach out to me personally. Um, you can reach me at this email address below. And again, this deck is available on the link um, that I sent earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so you can um, access it there. And then Justin and I will follow up in the Second Growth Facebook group um, with that link from startups.com um, to take advantage of that one year of free uh, send grid. So, yeah. Yep. And uh, for, yeah, we're going to post it into the Telegram group, the Facebook group, and then we'll re-upload uh, this video of all the talks as well as the slides on Google Drive, YouTube, and our upcoming new website. So there's going to be a lot of different ways to access. We want to kind of make this all readily available for everybody here. And uh, for those that haven't joined our Telegram as well, uh, we have about like 70 other people as well on the Telegram channel. I'm going to post it into the 
uh, chat here uh, and the document is there as well. Um, but yeah, thanks again for everybody tuning in on a happy, happy Saturday here. And uh, yeah, we are also having our next little uh, marketers roundtable on Monday, uh, 4 p.m. Uh, and it's going to be a little bit different. This is more of our technical talks. We're going to look to have one technical talk at, at least a week. And then on, on Mondays, on 4 p.m., uh, we are having a marketing roundtable. So you can actually come with some marketing and growth questions or challenges that you might have. Uh, and we'll do kind of like, like a growth hack live session. So there's going to be a lot of other marketers in there that we'll just go in and try to deep dive and solve your problems. But also, too, we'll share kind of like the winners of the last week too as well with kind of like what's working what's not working um and just network so um, we had a great success for, for this session actually this is one of our largest sessions uh and uh thanks again for musa to for coming in here uh, I personally, thanks for having me yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks for everybody attending as well uh and if you want to get in touch with them again hit, hit them up on on the facebook group or uh telegram as well too so awesome right. appreciate it awesome, guys. guys thank Killed you it. thank you Thanks, bro. Awesome. We'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces. Stay safe. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.